The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm McElroy. your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. It took too long. You, took, oh, you put Griffin. a little too much stink. We were trying to do like a your 1995 Chicago Bulls kind of stuff. Travis wasn't on Patrick that team. Patrick McElroy, you are in England. Uh, oh, uh, what? yeah. And I think it's, it sounds a little something like this. Go ahead, Justin. Go ahead, Justin. What does England sound like? No, like uh, around him? Like, yeah. It, you want me to like... Yeah, here, do here, like what England horse, sounds like. Here's the horse around. clumps. This is like a village. Yeah. yeah. All right, Gav, oh, your scone bread's ready, Gav. That's like good. That. Cool. That's what it'll um, be like there. Travis, it's so weird that you're in England Yeah. right now. I mean, not while you're recording this, but like when you're listening to this, probably... You're in London. Oh wait, when I'm England, listening to it, England. Justin, I don't listen li- to our listeners own. are listening to it. You're in England. You're in England, dude. How lucky! I. What are you? Pre- how are you preparing? Okay, this is the thing about us uh-huh, yeah. that a lot of people we don't talk about it enough. No, we don't talk about Bruno. It's like it's like Bruno. Yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about it enough. We all work out of our houses and uh-huh. thus are not acclimated to. Like outside play, <laughs> yeah, outside, right, right, yeah. right. outside our house, where the sun in the world, clouds. So we have to have extremely specific, nigh on hermetic conditions, correct? That mm-hmm. just sort of follow us around if we are to uh, uh, perform in the way to which people have become accustomed. Right. Travis, you are like you're leaving the bubble in such a major way right now. I've done a couple. Of I you know how you're compensating. Yeah, I've done a couple of things to repair. Did you ever see you that? You can't. You are. You are go. Tra- Travis. I don't want to get too worked up about this, but you're going into a situation where if you were in discomfort or inconvenience, President Joseph Gordon Biden himself could not intercede on your behalf. Well, I have diplomatic immunity. Not risking major, major political repercussions. I moved to D.C. so I could be closer to the support of daddy. I mean, Joseph Gordon Biden, Biden, (laughs) president. Um, so that like if I get hurt or uncomfortable, like Daddy would be, I mean, just born by would be right there for me. Yeah, yeah. no, JG Biden gave me diplomatic immunity when I get over there, so that's gonna help okay. a lot. That's gonna help a lot. Um, and uh, also I learned I don't know if you guys know this, every McDonald's in the UK operates as an American embassy. So if I go there, okay, I say which good. is nice. That's uh, good. So uh, the two things that I've done to prepare is one, I got those um. Their shoes that are like rubberized and they're like toe socks, but they're like rubberized shoes, and that's gonna help me walk on the cobblestones. Well, a lot. what? Well, now, did you really get the sh- the sock shoes? Well, I got it for the cobblestones. For the cobblestones, I, for the cobblestones. Yeah, cobblestones. it helps My with the fo- grip. Did you see Free Solo? So fucking funny. Yeah. Did you see <laughs> Solo? I really expanded the canon a lot. Now, uh, the second thing I've done, did you ever read that children's book where the man sells hats by stacking all the hats on top of his head? Yeah. Right? It's, it's, I think I've it's called done come, that. Get these, come Get These Hats. Uh, I've like done that, but with down. masks. So what I'm going to do is I've got uh, a stack of masks, about 10 masks deep, that I wear <laughs> on my face. Yeah. Um, each one more powerful than the next. And did you say Sticky Ricky Hat Stack Juice? <laughs> is the name of that book? Yeah, then the sticky. monkeys come and Sticky Ricky is like, you took my hat stack, 
I, I don't want it to do to now. God I'm that nothing. I just said sticky Ricky hat sack into oblivion and my track could be lowered at that point. So I was no, no longer bumps on. Now we're going to have Rachel game. raise it up and lower really it. Really slow it out. By the way, tricky Ricky hat stack. Oh, Sticky Ricky oh, Hatstack is, is the sequel. Not Sticky Ricky Hatstack. That makes a lot that's more the, sense. Yeah, That's the vivid entertainment uh, uh, version of it. Um, I, I It sucks that me and Justin are just stuck here in stupid old America. That's okay. You can Gross. hold it down. I've been here for, we've been here for so long and haven't, mm-hmm. gotten a br- haven't gotten a break like you're about to get. Hey, I also just days ago, just two days ago, remembered that I needed to dig out my power adapter for the plugs. Can we get this shit together? It's Can we figure this out, guys? It's I'm metal and electricity. Really. I'm not saying it has to all be the shape of America's plug. I'm saying, how can we not, as Let's, a planet, universally decide on a plug shape? Let's talk about it. Let's get okay? into this. Let's get into it. Countries get electricity at different times. There's a chart, I'm sure. Well, yeah, at night you don't need it. Can none of them, are they so horny for electricity that they can't wait to ask the next country, like, how did you guys do How did you guys, what was your plan? Because we were just going to Oh, you meant they get it at different times throughout history, not that everybody takes turns using electricity throughout (laughs) the day. No, I mean, like, there is... There is someone who did it first, and then there's someone who did it second, right? Yeah. And there's someone, and the person who did the second looked at the country that did it first. Mm-hmm. Yes. And was like, well, fuck that. We can oh, do this better. We can, not like that. we can do a better plug. But that's not how science works. That's not how tech works, where you fit, you do one thing, and then you rock with it. Although that is how we've done plugs. I think it sucks. Every place has their own plugs, and they all sometimes it's easy to get them twisted up and because there's different shapes of prongs. I want just one big prong on every yes. pl- one big prong, one big hole, not I guess big enough for a kid finger, but like Trav, you're going to the promised big. land because the UK just made a rule. Every plug's gotta be USB C. No more lightning Ooh, over there. They don't I got lightning in England. That. Oh, really? Bring plugs. They threw away all the lightning cords. You had Travis, to. you could be Prince, that's a weird thing, King Charles. King Charles the did first it. thing. <laughs> Yeah. The first rule. And then the only made. thing, then he abdicated and handed it to William. Like, that one thing was bugging me a lot. <laughs> I right really dude. was stuck <laughs> in my craw. What's, what people don't realize is that Queen Elizabeth yeah. made a law that it all had to be micro USB. And and actually, it was it was initially USB mini a. USB. Yeah. Yeah, it was mini USB, the really chunky boy. Yeah. And Charles would like sit behind her like, Mom, please, please, mom, mom. sucks. Please, I can't, I can't charge please. my Nintendo DS, mom. <laughs> please make it so that it's here. The first thing he did when he's king, he's like, "What's up? Give me all your lightning plugs. They're going in a bonfire." Uh, yes, sir. And what is your second proclamation? I didn't think beyond this. I didn't. This think was that as was far. It. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it, just like the last seventy years. But I've decided. Uh, I'm done now. William, oh. take it home. Also, the crown owns all the USB-C cords, so mm-hmm. those are all owned by by the by king. the TV show The Crown. Okay, bye, <laughs> bye. Do you think you know the the king now owns all the swans in England? Right, you know this thing where the yeah. queen owns all the swans. Yeah, now the king owns no, all the what? swans. What? I the king the queen the monarchy of England, the uh-huh. queen of England. Yeah. She owned all the swans. They legally belong to her. Correct. If you fuck with any swan in England, the you're, queen could come to you and be like, that's my swan. Yeah, you, you're That dead. sucked. As long as I we're think- on this note, I also want to establish, Griffin, in case you didn't know it, at the uh, Tower of London, there yeah. is someone whose job is like, I take care of the ravens. And like, that's his deal. That's his fine. Deal that's one keeper. one bird keeper is fine. I don't know that, Do the, did the swan <laughs> sign off on this? She also owns all the whales. People don't talk about that as much, but it's actually It doesn't true. come up as often. <laughs> she owns all the whales. It's rare, but... Justin, that you're driving too fast down the motorway and hit a whale. <laughs> so like, <laughs> she's not as worried about those. Well, she's not as worried about anything Do- anymore. Is she? Travis. Do you think she's when, dead, Griffin? Yeah, it's time that you think, accept it and move on. Do you think when King Charles got the crown, he found some swans that he had had particularly bad interactions with and was like, 
what's up now? Yeah. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. what's up now? Now, now, now who I, owns you? Justin, I actually think of what happened. He's got the crown and he went to sleep. Heavy head, by the way. Let's establish. And then he was woken in the middle <laughs> oh, of the night. I thought that was, oh, it was so, that was a bit full, but this crown is quite heavy. <laughs> it's made of lead or something. And he was woken by a tick on his nose and there was just like a crowd of, of swans around him. We're like, all right. Now that she's gone, we've got some demands. Um, yeah. We want to make sure that you're looking out for our whole deal. If yeah. you could bring back long necks is a beautiful thing. I think that that I love has that. gone there's, where are we at on this. There's a narrative that is spreading that you're not supposed to give bread to birds. And we hate that. We, hate we that. don't <laughs> like that. So if we you could bring b- also, bread and throw also peanut lot. butter we, M&Ms in there. We love we peanut, love butter, peanut M&Ms. butter M&Ms. And we never get to eat those. And we've wanted to declare war on geese for a while. And if you could like back us up on that, if it, if we could form some kind of alliance of Britain and swans v geese, that would be they, they, really they are, huge. They all have a straight face for a long time, and they all bust up like, ah, just kidding. Geese and swan are the same birds. Yeah, we, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> one of us is pretty and one of us is ugly, but that's just like humans, am I right? Look around. <laughs> yeah. Some of you are prettier than others, right? We call anyway, them where's mom? <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> anyway, anyway. That was, I think, actually the most moving part of her state funeral is when all the go- all the swans in England showed up to pay their respects. Mm-hmm. It was really beautiful. Um, uh, but, but Travis, you're in, in England. I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope stuff. I am too, Justin. Yeah. It's the I mean, future me. How, do you think you'll come back with an accent? Uh, oh, I actually so think I'll come back with less of an accent than I have now. Okay. Well, uh, what, and what's that? Like? And what's that going to sound like, Travis? Like Hello, more I am non. Travis. <laughs> this is Travis, and I am dogging. Yeah, that's less is this, British. Is this more pleasant for you, Griffin? Kind of, actually. Okay, then Here's I shall the thing, do this folks, from this point forward. When Travis leaves the country, Griffin and I become functionally unemployed. This is and true. thus and such, we have had to record a lot of content in the past week. True. And I honestly, I'm feeling. Sometimes that goes one way, where it's like, I have nothing. I've never been funny. Reddit's right. And then- (laughs) (laughs) Reddit's right about everything. Sometimes it goes the other way, where I just start feeling loose. I feel like this is my default The juice is loose, for sure. The juice is loose on on this this one. one. It's an advice show. We're going to read advice. We're going to do more than two questions this week. Let's go. We only did one last week. (laughs) Only did one last week. That's a huge- that's a, I mean, 100%, can't be 100%. Well, it, it, I believe the conversion rate, Justin, is one American question to 1.2 British questions. I've been yes. studying up a uh, little bit. Okay. Yeah, by the way, though, I will say exchange rate, you're going at a real choice. Real time, choice, man. baby. Stop uh, I real guess, choice. I don't acknowledge the uh, importance of money, so I guess that, that just doesn't matter to one me. One currency, one prong. One prong yep. for all, uniting us. Thank you. Earth dollars, Bit- earth prongs. That's earth what I've always said. Prongs. Bit prong. <laughs> Bit prong. <laughs> There's one prong for the blockchain. Okay. Um, I work the graveyard shift at the chain grocery store. Typically, my job is to put things on shelves and make said things on shelves look nice. Good. Use a planogram. Do some merchandising. Oh, I love yeah, planogram. I love that. Oh, God, what I wouldn't do for a nice planogram right now. However, I also find myself... Uh, bringing damaged goods to the damaged goods pile, choice, so another guy can scan it and the store can get that money back. Most of the time, these are things like dented or leaking cans, crunched up boxes, and exploded jello cups. However, sometimes I will find an open box of granola bars in the back of the shelf with a few missing, probably because someone decided just stealing one or two would be easier than stealing the whole box. My question is, would it be morally okay for me to also take a granola yes, bar get the from that box? Granola. It's not like they yes. can go back on the shelf and the scanning guy just takes the box itself, but also like it is stealing. That's from Conflicted in Colorado. Okay, okay, okay. Griffin is right. Here's the thing. What you are asking is the wrong question, question asker. Is it morally okay? Yes, absolutely. Might you get in trouble if you get caught? Yes. That is because business practices rarely line up with morality. Listen, listen. Listen. They they expect you, they almost want you to steal the granola bars. And I'm not even going to say the word verb steal anymore. It's you are being, you, your labor has value and yes. you understand that and your employer understands that and i can almost guarantee 
that you are not being you are not receiving fair compensation for that. So, no. but they can't tell you like you're you're going to be paid eleven fifty an hour, which is like not enough money for anything. And also, wink, wink. If you want to swipe, <laughs> whatever's a, not nailed down. Whatever if you want to take a, uh, also, we offer vacation. T- we offer vacation time to the Nature Valley. Wink, 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 wink. Um, and where you'll have a crunchy time. <laughs> uh, they they can't say that. You need to take the granola bars. You need to compensate yourself with everything that yes. you possibly can. So, you okay. Food dates, expiration dates, they're made up. So we waste lots yes. of food that way. In Montana, in Montana, they made a rule to protect the dairy industry there that you uh, have to throw milk out 12 days after pasteurization, which is a massive, incredible waste. You can't even That's turn ridiculous. this stuff into cheese. They can't even turn this stuff into cheese anymore because the processing plants for those have moved out of Montana. It's such a ginormous waste. And the people who uh, they were talking to a grocer on Planet Money who's in the system, and it's illegal for him to donate the milk to homeless shelters. Illegal for him to donate the milk. So you, you but he, psst, you know what he does? He does it he anyway. He donates the milk because it's the right thing to do. And the right thing for you to do is to not let these bars end up in a landfill, except unless that landfill is called Reggie's Tummy. And your name yeah. is Reggie, and your body's a lady. Reggie, oh. and then just like take all of them, eat one of them, hand out the rest to people you see who need some, who need a granola bar. And can I tell you something? That's pr- pretty much anyone could eat a granola bar at any time. That's why they exist. I mean, a granola. No one's ever like, I'm starving. I can't wait to get home and eat a granola bar. You have the granola bar with you because that's your moment to be like, I'm not hungry, but maybe I could yeah. be hungry in the future. So that's I, the mo- that that is the tagline of granola bars. Right? Absolutely. It's like you don't want to eat this, but if you don't eat something, you're gonna throw up. Right? So that is yeah. so reach for Nature Valley. Nature Valley, it's literally better than nothing. <laughs> Um, hey, do you all want to go on over to um, visit my friend and yours, the wizard? I feel like we were just there. Okay. Well, we were just there. We do this every week. Uh, Summer sent this in. Thank you. And this is scary. This is another It's just that, like I see the wizard more than I see our dad. And I don't know how I feel about that. I feel, I mean, our dad doesn't have ma- magic wisdom. Um, Not but, magic you know, but, wisdom, but I mean, he's seen a lot of he's shit. He's got he regular. World War II, I think. Yeah, he would definitely did one of them, right? Our dad, our dad did one at least one war. Right? He was in one of them. Did he do? Wait, hold did, on. Wait, is no, our wait, dad a draft no, no, dodger? No, no. no. Um, dad's not a draft dodger. He would. He was extremely close to being drafted, and then the war ended, so he didn't get 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 it. Uh, draft. How, con- how convenient, how convenient, huh? As a result of this, as a result of this specific one only thing, Dad used to extol the virtues of Richard Nixon as a president because <laughs> whatever <laughs> actions he did take did prevent Dad from going to Vietnam. <laughs> whatever else, Richard Nixon he did, did this so sure. one thing right. One of our worst presidents, save for <laughs> our save daddy. For- uh, okay, uh, so this is as a beneficiary. Yeah, I w- there's a very continued. good chance the three yeah. of us either wouldn't have been here or might have been raised by a very different man, a different Clint <laughs> McElroy. Ah, oh, God. You okay? You hit your I'm elbow. Just having some? No, I'm having a. a the a idea of our dad thing. on a battlefield is giving <laughs> your son. Yeah, same dude doing his imagine. Spud Rimshot voice as he's yeah. getting shot at. <laughs> stop! Stop! Oh man! And at least one of the planes, Clint McRoy, has probably been. Anyway, uh, our our dad's not a good soldier. This is uh, some summer sent this in. It's Wiki How. Uh, Where is how he to, the best soldier? How to take care of a monster high doll? If you have a monster high doll, but you don't know how to take care of it, this article can help. Do, do you all have any of these in your house? Yes, I have monster high dolls. No, I we don't allow representations of demonic figures into my home. Okay. We, uh, we just watched uh, the Monster High movie. There's this thing now with kids entertainment where they turn cartoons into real people. Like mm-hmm. like the really loud house. You know that that yes. rig, uncanny valley real people as the cartoon characters, loud house Christmas? That's a series now. Like, why do oh. we need to bring cartoons to life with real people? It's very upsetting to See, me. See, I thought yeah. you meant like uh where they were like, you know how you love my little pony French's magic? Let's make them into more people 
Now they're called Equestria Girls. And it's like we're just going to ignore the fact that they were once horses and are now people. It's normal. It's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. I saw one. Hey, Arnold. But is it's the it a equivalent th- of looking at de- they're It's the equivalent of them looking at deviant art and like taking one strap off the shoulder. Like, is this what you want? Okay, <laughs> we'll we'll make it more human like. I guess. Anyway, I was gonna make a great Hey Arnold joke, but that time has passed. Now we're gonna learn how to take <laughs> care of a monster. Hi, doll. Tending to your doll. Comfort the doll. Make sure she's not shy or afraid. Cover her eyes when something scary is happening, and read about her online to make sure she is comfortable with any activity you might do with her. Wait. Wait, Wait, that last bit? Yeah. Well, that, hey, start to finish. Sometimes there's a roller coaster of emotions in a thing. This was like a roller coaster of like questionable, except it just kept going yeah. down further and further. Yeah. If, there's gonna, yeah. if there's necessary care steps to the toy I've purchased at Target for $15, I expect that documentation to be provided alongside the toy. I don't, yeah. it's not like in fucking Gremlins, they're like, look at this little cutie pie, real cute. You gotta take good care of them. Figure, like, get online, call check the, the helpline, check the forums, you'll you'll get there. Not that it would've fucking mattered. <laughs> yeah, that what? kid, he had three fucking rules, dude. Three rules, get not hard. together. Hey, you know what, I own a dog, there's way more rules about keeping that damn thing it's alive. Like a billion rules. Like, don't give it grapes. You know what I haven't done yet? Given my dog grapes. Yeah, you're crushing You couldn't it. keep uh, t- track of the fucking time All right, to hey, not feed listen. them after goddamn midnight, you loser. I know, Anyways, I know, um, I know. <laughs> Change the doll's um, clothes. Here's the thing that I don't like. What Griffin, I want to acknowledge is something in that. Uh, Go ahead. It says, make sure your doll doesn't isn't scared of things, Yeah. but also cover their eyes when something scary happens. And that just seems and to me like I'm teaching the doll to be afraid. And also, aren't they monsters? They're fr- yeah, they're Frankenstein's and Dracula's and mummies. Like, uh, why they're not scared? Yeah, f- famously, I guess their eyes? Frankenstein famously not afraid of anything uh, oh, except for, uh, fire and fire. Uh, like a little girl fire. one time fire. and water and a shadow and Is a, bug a werewolf and afraid of the moon or silver bullets or fi- like? Or does a werewolf it's acknowledge afraid of, like, those it's things? It's afraid are scary? of how much it loves the moon. It's like, oh, there's that thing again. I need yeah. it. I need it. What change, would I do without you? Change the doll's clothes. You don't want to be in the same outfit for two days, and neither does she. That's two assumptions you've just made there that are both equally incorrect. Yeah. Buy her new clothes at a toy store or other shops. You could also use other doll clothes that fit. You can even try to make your own. Also have a container or such to keep her clothes in. You don't want to lose them. Uh, hey, as a parent, that yeah. last bit is actually clutch. They should listen to that. Get a container, folks. Get a container and make sure you keep all the clothes in the container. Somehow, my children have like sort of shorts, dead drops all around the house, so that if they, if if things go wrong, and they we need to bug out, uh, they have <laughs> so they have options shorts? available in every <laughs> room. Shorts within reach. Yeah, take her outside. I will say that. Um, one of the things that I was not expecting as a parent is how many different spaces you need throughout your home for Barbie <laughs> shoes. Yeah, like yeah. every yes. room, it's like a fire extinguisher except for like Barbie feet. <laughs> yeah, right? sure. Which is like, well, yeah, in case there ends up being a Barbie within six inches of any place, make sure that there's at least one pair of shoes in there. At least right. according to my children, that's the deal. Also, for some reason, chapstick has to be fucking everywhere. Kids love this shit. You guys heard about this? Kids love chapstick and acorns. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what if, you if know. If we can make acorn flavored chapstick or chapstick shaped like acorns, rich man. Because what if Skipper drops a glass and it shatters and now all of a sudden Barbie don't want right. like it? Cuts on her feet and you choose everywhere. Take her outside. They need fresh air like we do. They don't. If you bring Draculaura nope. outside, make sure she has a toy umbrella or sunscreen so she doesn't burn. If you bring Laguna, Make her wait in water. Sunscreen, how embarrassing! If you bring Laguna, make her wait in water. Make sure you always keep an eye on your doll, as not, not as not not lose it during your excursions. Um, That's true because if you're not careful, hawk swoops down, picks it right up. Hawk swoops down, will eat Dracula a whole. I don't. It's fucked up that in the same paragraph is like they need to go outside, but Dracula will die outside. She, there's, it's a high risk game for Draculaura. She needs it, but she will die if you do it wrong. She'll burst into flames, and that'll be on you. Um, the the wet hey, one must stay wet. 
it's, it's, it's a spooky, spooky season, right? I feel like more and more these days, vampire lore is getting pretty loose with the ability to go outside. If if I could take an umbrella out, it's mm-hmm. not that restrictive as, a, as a vampire, right? If that's covering it, then it's just like, oh, look, I guess I'm fine now. Yeah. I can wear a big hat and some, I believe the word was sunscreen. And just, never once in Vampirina do we ever see her feast on human flesh. And I know that seems like a big jump, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. And now my almost six-year-old daughter has started to question, like, she's a vampire, right? Yeah. So she drinks blood? And I don't know how to answer that. You, she needs to know if she's outside, Dracula won't get her. Like... Yeah. That's why we love summertime. Treat the doll like a child. You are her mom, so you need to take care of her. Give her food, baths, and basically follow these instructions to make sure she is a happy doll. Keep the doll safe. Food. Keep the doll safe. She might get broken if you don't, or worse. What's worse? Dead. Dead. Yeah. Lots of, lots of love bear might throw her into uh, a big fiery pit with all of your childhood do- toys and they down die. A gr- down a grate where you can see her, but you can't get oh, to her. Oh, that would be the oh, worst. That's bad. That bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Save feed her worse. to a Pennywise. Yeah. Or an- another kid. Eats take- her doll right up. Another kid takes her from your hands to the playground because the kid's bigger and stronger than you are. And but they don't know to go to Wiki out to find out how to keep back Draculaura alive. So like that's yeah, a fate. And then worse you don't thing. keep your grades up. Undress the doll in a private place, like a bathroom or closet, or she might get upset that Thank other you. monster high dolls saw her naked. Thank you. That's base. That's basic Thank decency. You. you actually should not be there either. You yeah. should leave the doll on the floor and then leave the room until you think the doll. You is need dead. to use the. T- you got to use tools that like mechanics use to like get into your car when you lock your keys in the car to change the doll's yeah. clothes from like under yeah. the crack of the door. Now I think yeah. though there should be a like step above that, which is like. Ask your monster high doll, does she want the other monster high dolls to see her naked? Because maybe she's just like, I love this. I'm proud of everything fine. that Monster God fine. gave We're... me. <laughs> Thank um, you, Monster God. Thank, Thank you, Monster, you, monster God, God, for my rockin' bod. That's what I say every day when I wake up. I step out yeah. of the shower and I loudly announce, Thank you, Monster God, for my rockin' bod. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I lotion it up. This is me talking, by the way, not a monster high doll. That would no, be this weird. is important. That's Travis <laughs> saying how he does his moisturization. Create a home loudly and screen. proudly and devoutly <laughs> and resoundingly and resoundingly. It's kind of like the crazy monster god for my rocking yeah. bod, and then I flagellate myself in private. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I apply the lotion. Yeah. It's basically like the opening to American Psycho, except there's like a swamp blob outside. Like, yes, yeah, my child. Yes, yeah, my child. You're welcome. <laughs> good, good, good. Anything <laughs> else? Pancakes? Um, create a home. Where is home for your doll? In your drawers? Under your bed? Well, imagine this. A nice house for your doll to sleep in at night. A place to have parties with friends. Or just eat pizza! <laughs> um, I'm not going to... This, this is such a big part this is a, this paragraph is way too big for me to read and have it be funny but basically if it's a water doll make it look like water if it's a wolf do wolf oh in the home in the home yeah uh, and then make sure the doll do. likes her home fill it with furniture and make sure there's a bathroom you may also choose to give it a theme if you had draculaura you can make the walls black slash pink and make sure she doesn't have any windows design the house depending on what the doll is like i'm worried about the re- what you're doing to the resale value, what you're doing to your equity in the home if you remove the windows so that your vampire doll doesn't die. Uh, like, that's the, See, you're assuring at that I point the house will only be sold to other Draculauras, which is, you're really limiting yourself. But it's a much limited market. Um, uh, do, Are they talking about like in your actual home? No, this has got like, like a shoebox. They what? got like a they got like a shoebox, and they've um, taped up some pictures of scary stuff inside the box, which is basically. Oh yeah, they love that, but not do. too scary. Not too yeah. scary. careful. Um, Give me hair. Draculaura gallons of blood. Yeah, pour Don't it blood right over all over her. Head. She'll love it. Um, I'm gonna shoot through this next section real fast. Brush the doll's hair. 
style it to make sure it matches her outfits, give the doll a bath, remove Obviously. grime with nail varnish slash polish remover and get some Q-tips. Do be careful with that because you might also remove eye and mouth yeah. <laughs> and face yeah. parts of it. Um, change the clothes. We already did that. Thank you. Clean the doll's uh, clothes routinely and clean the doll's hair. Just one more time. going to get in there and make sure that that hair is very, very clean. Um, this is a baby. This is a baby. Oh, what you're what you're doing is taking care of a baby? Is that what you're saying? Yes. This is a yes, that baby. Is, yeah. And, and maybe there's something to that because it's like that's part of the simulation and that's what's cool. But also the baby is, uh, you know, can turn into a... You know, uh, some sort of lich or something. Um, <laughs> also, um, I just want to say we're we're all three. Hey, if, you, if if one of the the girls in Monster High could turn into a lich, what would her name be? Um. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. I don't know the naming conventions of Monster High. I Legina? Think. Sure, Regina? sounds great. No. Um, kind of sounds like Regina. Uh, well, I'll come back to it. Okay. The author of this WikiHow article, we're all three kids. Well, we're all three parents at this point. We got kids. And the author of this WikiHow article is assuming that what children love most about toys is the amount of restriction and responsibility that come with them. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. Like, my daughters both like having, like, dolls and baby dolls. And then they mostly spend a lot of time swinging those around and dropping them off stuff and, like, just really kind of fucking them up <laughs> in a way that I don't think they're like, better be careful of the sun. Oh, I got to make sure I bathe these things. See, so much as they're like, look at this slide. And then drop them from, like, four feet off the ground. Um, is this article is He's so much scary. longer. The next segment is all about individual tips for each Monster High doll. So maybe um, we'll just like shoot through. If you're playing with Rochelle Goyle, um, make sure you give her a good pet. Um, I assume that means a, like a familiar or a creature and not to like pet the doll hard or something like that. Um, for With Frankie That's Stein... This is an important one, and don't get these switched up. If you play with Frankie Stein, you can give her a boyfriend if you want. Um, but if you're playing with um, Abby Bominable, Abby Bominable, if you're playing with Abby Bominable, don't make Abby flirt with any boys. She says is not honorable. That's Abby Bominable says it's not honorable. Or d don't make her flirt with any boys that she says is not honorable. Like that boy's not honorable. Okay. Please don't. Okay. Even oh, like this this boy. This trash is bag. Dishonorable. This is this trash bag <laughs> over here. Leave that one for Frankie Stein, who will eat up the trash because she will date we, whatever. Uh, <laughs> if you're gonna give Frankie Stein a boyfriend, you should make it out of spare parts of other kins or something, right? Like I think she'd yeah. really appreciate that. That feels um, like a thing Frankie Stein would be into. Make me a boyfriend. This is a huge one. If you are playing with Claudine Wolf. Um, make sure that when you turn off the light, Claudine goes crazy. And you may be wondering, <laughs> how do I do? How would I go about accomplishing that? Um, and the answer is, I guess you tape her to a Roomba, <laughs> and then a light sensitive uh, Roomba, a and then you you know shout the command word that makes the Roomba go just like fucking ballistic, it's ape shit, just absolutely ape shit. Um, I mean, if you're playing By the way, Cleo Justin, didn't... speaking of Roombas, I just watched Hocus Pocus 2. You did not tell me what a significant plot importance Roombas have in that movie. Yeah, Roombas are a huge part of the plot. Um, if you are playing... If I told you... If yeah. I told you... Yeah. That in Hocus Pocus, at one point, Kathy and Jimmy can't find a broom, so she duct tapes two magical Roombas to her feet. Like a hoverboard. I Did you love think that, that I was making that up as a joke for our show, or that I'm saying apart from the movie Hocus Pocus Two? That's, that's good. That's Plus. good. That's good and a good joke. And I bet you. Can I say something? I bet you. I bet you. Kathy fucking sold it. I bet you she made you bust up with that. Oh, she's having the time of her life. What if yeah, I told so you, you that there yeah. is one prolonged shot in the movie as the characters on screen are very minimal in the foreground and mostly the focus of the shot is just a glowing Walgreens. And it is a Walgreens and it lingers on it for 
what feels like 30 solid seconds. And then Walgreens is referenced multiple, there are multiple scenes in a Walgreens. There's Walgreens, once again, plays a pivotal role in and Hocus Pocus And every shot is framed, so it's like Kathy and Jimmy, Bette Midler, and a huge red W in between them, like always separated and framed by Walgreens logo. They replace Sarah Jessica I Parker can't. with the Walgreens logo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey guys, if you're playing with Cleo Denial, feed her grapes. And if it may seem like she can't, but if you push the grapes into the into her face hard enough, you can make pretend anything. <laughs> they will go away. They will go away eventually. Um, if you're playing with Torali, sometimes she might scratch the furniture. That's it. Like you know that that's what you're gonna go with. It's, if you're playing with Gulia Yelps, this one's this one's great because if you are playing with Gulia Yelps, this will be my last tip. For the for this Halloween segment, you gotta feed her brains and fast food. Kill, oh. kill, living things that have a brain in it to give to your doll, and or <laughs> hit up Arby's. If Arby sold brain, <laughs> if Arby sold brain meat, which their motto would make you think they that they do, the, they got the meat. Yeah, you'd think. You should be able to go into an Arby's and be like, for me, I would like a big Cheddar Boy, a number sixty, a number 16 Cheddar Boy combo meal. And for this one, Gulia Yelps, and you put her up on the counter, and you say, you know what to do with her. You take her back in the back room where you keep the, the bad meats, the meats that you maybe don't want people yeah. to know that you do have on offer, and you make sure she is sated. Yeah. Um, thank you. Of course. Thank you. She'll die without it, and she's my best friend. What about cauliflower? Is that the awesome? doll cauliflower? The brains? Fuck off! Yeah. Uh, oh, I thought you were saying there's a monster high doll called cauliflower. Like. That's awesome. All the other dolls are like a pastiche. No, it would be Griffin. It would be Carla Flower. Thank you very much. But what would that be referencing, Charles? Okay. What great monster is that? A That's fun. If there was one of them that was just like vegetables. <laughs> yeah. It could be anything, Jesse. It could be Swamp Thing. It could be Man Thing. It could be Audrey 2 from Little Shop, of course. It could be there are man eating plants all over the fucking place. Read a book. Charlie got these toys for her um, <coughs> for her birthday. Uh, Riley got Charlie this um, stuffed guinea pig in a in a cage. And the thing about it is that it's um, pregnant with other smaller baby guinea pigs. Oh, cool. Great. But the birthing happens automatically. Huh? So on a certain timer, over a certain, you turn it on, and eventually the first baby, uh, well, what it does is it pops out of the top and then just kind of lands on the mom guinea pig and rolls off and she had a baby. And the mom yeah. eats it. Normal. No, mom does, you know, you open that, it's like a surprise toy, right? You see what kind of guinea pig you Just got. like real life. And it's set to do this over a 24 hour period where periodically over this 24 hours, this thing will just give birth. Does it at least but make a noise? Can you set it you in the a corner until you hear it go like, Yay! and then you know like, oh honey, there's it a does, new Yeah, there's noises. Not new again! Toy. There's a 100% birthing noises, 100%. But if you bought this gift for somebody who does not have that kind of attention span, like say a child, <laughs> um, there is a switch on it that's basically like, <laughs> Hold up. Turbo mode. Oh, whoa. <laughs> it's like, hey, kids, here, here we go. <laughs> you like, you can flip this switch to make this guinea pig just go into like turbo shot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably the wildest option uh, that, that I have seen on a toy is like, let's just kick this birth cycle into overdrive <laughs> and crank it up. Let's go to the money you know, zone. I think it's money zone time. Yeah, let's go to Maze. You know, guys, with my international travel, I have been studying up a lot using Babbel, and I uh, have been studying English. So I now oh. say, yeah, I've learned how to say like bangers and lift, and I say like biscuits and flat. How did you pull this off, Travel? I know that you don't really apply yourself to stuff. Um, well, I already said, Justin, I used Babbel. 
Mm-hmm. That's an. Uh, it's a. I guess I was going to drill down on like maybe what even is that at all. Oh, okay. Well, it's uh, like an app. It's a language learning app. Uh, that sold like more than 10 million subscriptions. And it's not just English, I should point out, you can also do like Spanish or German or Italian or French or Portuguese or Swedish or Turkish or Dutch, Polish, Indonesian, Norwegian, Danish, Russian, and yes, English. We need to get the Animaniacs at this point. There's too many. They got to come up with like a. I mean, I just said, okay, with Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete one of their bite-sized lessons so that you can start having real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Now this is a problem because I did just start uh, learning English uh, two days ago. Right. Uh, so, but by the time I get back, now other language apps use AI, the movie, for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. Those are human beings, not some phony baloney computer brains. Yeah. Who fucking needs Jude it? Law Careful. over here, just just like repeat after Jude Law. <laughs> yeah, you know how Jude Law went around uh, telling lonely ladies about language and stuff. Yeah, man. And it's voiced yeah. by real native speakers, not computers. Who needs them? With Babbel, you can choose from fourteen different languages that I've already listed. Right now, get up to fifty five percent off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash my brother. That's B A B. B E L dot com slash my brother for up to 55%. That's a lot of percent off your subscription. Babbel language for life. Her Majesty served Great Britain and the Commonwealth loyally for over 70 years. And while, of course, we feel a profound sadness, we must remember she lived a long life and died in such a way that I think many of us would want for ourselves. She was at home, surrounded by her family. And, of course, she was listening to the Beef and Dairy Network podcast. The Beef and Dairy Network podcast is a multi-award winning comedy podcast, and you can find it at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. You're in a theater. The lights go down. You're about to get swept up by the characters and all their little details and interpersonal dramas. You look at them and think, that person is so obviously in love with their best friend. Wait, am I in love with my best friend? That character's mom is so overbearing. Why doesn't she just stand up to her? Oh, God, do I need to stand up to my own mother? If you've ever recognized yourself in a movie, then join me, Jordan Cruciola, for the podcast Feeling Seen. We've talked to author Susan Orlean on realizing her own marriage was falling apart after watching Adaptation, an adaptation of her own work, and comedian Hari Kondabolu on why Harold and Kumar was a depressingly important movie for Southeast Asians. So join me every Thursday for the Feeling Scene podcast here on Maximum Fun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, really thought we were going to get a second yeah. question. Okay. That's okay. We'll get there maybe one day. No, I'm doing the second question now. Oh, that's what I that's how it is. Just a little flourish for it. Nope. Now we're doing the second question. Maybe I'll change my mind. Okay. Now I have to think about it. My six year old son recently discovered Pokemon. Hell he is. And is obsessed. My husband and I know nothing about the cards, the game, or the universe. The head the headspace, the experience. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the theme, lifestyle. The lifestyle. The agenda. <laughs> if I may be so bald. Well, yeah. Recently, my son got a mute, mute, Mewtwo. V- star. G- Griffin. Yeah, sure. Mewtwo v- V-Star. V-Star Rainbow oh, in a pack. Oh, fuck. Oh, Our man. Our Googling says it's a pretty valuable card. Uh, yeah, that's putting it lightly. Uh. <laughs> It's power charts, sir. The thing is, he's six, and he's mostly into the game for the trades. If we let him keep this card, he will trade it for yeah. Lord knows what. God, yeah. What's the protocol here? Let Fucking... him make his deals, protect him from older kids taking advantage, sell the card now, and buy him a bunch of other packs of cards with the proceeds. That's from Poke Perplexed in Pittsford. You've come to the right place. Indeed. The economy. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm is fueled by suckers. Yeah. And it's that there's a circle of life mm-hmm. around this whole thing. Yeah. It, 
you are correct in that if you do not intervene, one day your son's going to leave the house with a Mewtwo V Star Rainbow worth. Oh, if, Hawk is going to swoop if, down, take it, my, <laughs> put it in its nest with its mom's eye it dolls. Uh, it, according to the, I mean, the recent sort of like uh, you know Pokemon trades that I've uh, been reading it values that one at about fifty five hundred dollars. Wow. Um. If he leaves the house with it, he's gonna come back with a fucking scratched up, moldy ass dugong with a fucking bent ass corners, and people have written like custom attacks with marker on it, like one water energy, a hundred and fifty damage, and this always hit like fucking like your your nep your dumbass friend's nephew Kyle <laughs> is just gonna like walk away whistling $5,500 richer. I congratulate you on having the clarity of mind as a parent to look at your six year old child and say like, hey, this kid's a rube. Yeah, this, I mean, look yeah. at this kid. He is 100%, he's got Mark written all over him. I did my best, but I raised an absolute maroon. This yeah. guy's absolutely. And, and listen, like he, I love that he's so wide-eyed and open to the world, but this kid's gonna get taken to the fucking yeah, cleaners. cleaners. And <laughs> Kyle's gonna have a little, little nice day for himself. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a service that your son is providing to Kyle. I was the recipient. I both gave away some real beauties and also benefited from. Some real, some real dummies, and that's. But that's the that's the way of things, Griff, isn't it? Griff's been the Kyle, and he's been the your child. I've like, been the Kyle. I've been the your child. I've been all over this great world of ours. But he's never been to me. That's that's, mm, that's that deep. I've never been. I've never visited Justin <laughs> no, even <I> once. <laughs> no, <laughs> Griffin. He may, he's never been to Maine. It's uh, it. no, uh, he's, he's using. You've never been. To, I have never been, never been to Maine. No, we went it's to what? Maine, didn't we? Doesn't it feel like we should have gone to Fox, Maine? Is it Foxwood? No, Foxwood's Fox not Maine. In, yeah, it was no, somewhere else. No, it was Massachusetts, I think. Um, so the answer uh, is simple: you let him make the trade to Shady Kyle, and then you bump into Kyle as he walks away, and he's like, "Ha, huh, another great deal!" But then he goes to check his pockets. What? The card's gone. That's right. Bye. You got it because you've been taking pickpocket classes at the Y. Yeah, and child yeah. child pockets are the toughest ones to pick. So little, so, so little. So you did have to you had to study for a couple of years uh, to get yeah. good at it. Luckily, you saw this coming a mile away because of your uh, son's uh, easygoing demeanor. And you looked at him when he was three, and you were like, mm, "Someday this kid's gonna get taken to the cleaner." So I better start pickpocketing now. Long con, long con. I think. Oh wow! I Hold think. on, wait. Let's hear. Let's hear Justin out. No, I just meant it's the long griff. Like you've been planning for a long time to rob this kid. Yeah, okay. whatever. Whenever Kyle, whoever Kyle ended up being, yeah, the deck was stacked against him from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Kyle thought he was in charge. No, 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 no. You're the director of this little play. Now, uh, I <laughs> Kyle was... is really your puppet. Yes, and and this is all to teach your just so so naive son of last night. I think. Uh, you know, my kid's almost six, and if I said, if you give me this, I can then turn it into a lot more of the things you like, that feels like a slam dunk okay. explanation, right? That if yeah. I say, this one card, I could use this to buy you many, many packs of cards. Wow. Right? Like, that feels like something that kid would be way into, right? Yeah, you can also just take a picture of the card and let him carry the picture around. There <laughs> you go. Cut it out. Cut it out. Because hey, then you can, hey, you can have a bunch of those. You know what I mean? You can just trade card, those to Kyle. Sell the card, buy a laminator, print it out, make a new card. You know, there's well, nothing illegal about making your own fake Pokemon cards and selling them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not illegal. There's no one. They're not legal it, fucking it's tender. It's not money. Yeah. <laughs> What are they gonna get you on counterfeiting? Come on, take their granola bars, sell the fake <laughs> sell cards. Sell the fake cards. This is America, baby. Because that's good. Because sometimes you have an idea like, what if there was an even smaller Pikachu named Squeakachu? Yeah. And then you can <laughs> make him. You can make yeah. him be real with a printer and a and a laminator. And he's got an attack that costs no energy. And yeah. It does three hundred damage and ruins and someone's credit score. And <laughs> and if it's a, a a card game, then it's not fan fiction; it's a mod. There it's you a go. Mod. Oh, this is DLC. Um, this is 
<laughs> this isn't uh, Velma and Shaggy kissing. This is an expansion on uh, on the Velma and Shaggy universe. Exactly. Right. A modification. An upgrade. If you will. If you will. Also, I gave, I gave Shaggy big pecs. Because I love that. Man. I like his Shaggy pecs. Well, could we do a shirt? Do you think we could sell a shirt that has With a that strong shaggy. shaggy on it? <laughs> it's like strong Shaggy. But just no, it's says, like a, it wasn't me. I think it's a meme. I think actually Strong Shaggy is a meme. Like for whatever reason, kids like uh, like Shaggy if he was like really strong. Yeah, I don't know why, but this guy keeps popping up in my YouTube videos, and every time I see him being very strong and you know beating up Huggy Wuggy or any of the other sort of fucking video game degenerates, um, and the kids go crazy, and it's like that dude is high on drugs. He is Casey Kasem. Yeah. He has no friends. He eats dog he food. Steals people's sandwiches. Steals people's sandwiches. Please do not aspire to be this man. He has if, wasted his potential. What if we made a t-shirt that was just a series of pictures of like Shaggy on a sofa, Shaggy on a counter, Shaggy in the shower, Shaggy being caught on camera? What do you think? In the shower? Yeah. Uh, but we saw him in the shower. It wasn't me. Oh, I can, oh okay. Oh, because yeah. he's shaggy, right? But he's on the sofa. No, I the get shower. the joke now. I guess in my mind, when I heard you say, "Let's do a T-shirt with a nude cartoon character," yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I should note this isn't it. like a joke. This is a separate business I want to start where we are selling these at like a hot topic or something. I think that these would actually do really well in that market. Not yeah. as like a Macroy Brothers joke thing, but to like branch out into actual like more like mimetic T-shirts. You mm. couldn't sell it at a hot topic. You could sell it at a kiosk outside of the Hot Topic, because as mm -hmm. far as I can tell from mall kiosks, anything fucking goes. Anything goes. You can have yeah. Shaggy's dong fully on display in the shower. <laughs> you fully, fully can. It's like international waters if you're in the mall hallways. Yeah, we've got, we've got Shaggy nude on t-shirts and Pelotons. Mm -hmm. Come on yep. in. <laughs> uh, this just says Pelicanton. Yeah, it's my, it's my it's version mine. of it where you're riding the bike and there's a video behind you it's, of a pelican chasing you. It's an, expan <laughs> it's an expansion to the Peloton. It's not a rip off. Yeah, it's an expansion. It's, it's, I trademarked it myself. I wrote the idea on a piece of paper and I mailed it to myself and I haven't opened it. So see you in court. This is legally binding. My neighbor recently removed the hedge on their side of the fence between our properties. This fence is around two feet from my house and it's not very tall. This means that the neighbors now have an unobstructed view through my window into my bed. Even though I keep the blinds low, I still prefer to keep a fan in the window, mm, which requires them to be open far enough that I'm certain my neighbors will have a line of sight from their window straight to my junk. Am I still good to sleep in the nude? Should I let their uh, decisions to remove the privacy hedge decide how I dress at night? Or do I give this pro provenly nosy neighbor an eyeful in hopes she plants a new privacy bush? That's from Brett <laughs> Bedtime Bush and Bremerton. Uh, but you chose to work use the word Bush. You chose it. You chose it. You could have said something else, um, but you didn't. Um, this feels tricky to me. Oh, it does. Feels fraught, Travis. Don't just Travis. Tell me what they should do, and don't just say. Plant another taller bush next to their bush. No, it just it strikes me as like, um, I, if you are not bothered by it, right? If you're not like, oh no, what do I do now? If it's just like, well, you made some decisions, and this is where your choices have brought you. I will continue on my momentum, like uh, un unless acted upon by an outside force. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are two different kinds of naked. Okay. There's you don't have clothes on, and you're worried there's any chance in the on earth someone might see you. Mm -hmm. Or there's the times when you're naked and you're just like you. That's who you are. You're in your body. Uh huh. You're you're feeling you're sexy. You know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And, and you're like, saying thank you, Monster God, for my rock thank and you, bod. Monster God for my rock and bod. And. This person is never going to be able to get into that second headspace. Right. Because there's always the possibility uh. that you could be being perused. It's not about the neighbor. It's about you. You need to be able to be not just nude, but indescribably 
perfectly nude. Oh, Deeply. A nude soul as well, if you will. Yes, nude. To, yes, emotionally nude. Okay. So what do you do then, Justin? You plant a second okay. taller bush. Now, hold on. I was <laughs> explicitly told. I just didn't want you to take mine. Oh, okay. a, a second. <laughs> I didn't know we could do that. We've been doing this show for over a decade. I know. I didn't know we could say like, I and just, I called dibs on this answer. I just came up with it. I was Fuck, like, I don't want to interrupt man. him. I'll just put a bookmark in so he doesn't take mine. That's so good, dude. I it should have. If I was gonna invent that rule, I wish I'd done it for. I was about to say a better joke, but like a joke. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, like yeah, the yeah. idea you get. You what, get about, the idea. what about, are any of us truly nude in the dark? Huh. If you're in the yes. dark and the darkness and no one can see your privacy, mm-hmm. are you even nude? <laughs> huh. Do you think when the darkness band was in the green room, anyone ever leaned in? And just like shut off the lights real quick and slam the door, and the band's like, "Oh, here we Busting go again." Up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> then so there's always a joker, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you so much for listening to our program. Uh, I'm sorry that my brothers denied you that wonderful uh, Munch Squad. I was go- definitely really, Save it, really baby. gonna do. Save it. Mm-hmm. Do two next time. Um, but, uh, you know, I hope you had fun regardless. I, that, that's all we, that's all we ever hope for here. That you enjoy yourself. Is Try that all going on? Wait, is that all we ever hope for? It's all we ever hope for. Oh man. Okay. I'm learning so maybe, much on this episode. It, well, maybe would it kill you to buy a shirt from time to time? You know what I mean? There we yeah. go. There it is. Maybe a, maybe a deluxe blanket. Oh, you know, speaking know. of that, Justin, it's so funny you should what? make that. We have a Garrow blanket on sale in the merch store designed by Lynn Doyle. And this is like a beautiful, I'm gonna say tapestry-esque mm-hmm. Garrow blanket over at macroymerch.com. We've also got our Candle Nights wrapping paper back designed by Justin Gray. And 10% of all merch proceeds this month go to Fair Elections Center. And listen, it's not just that, it's all the other merch there. And it's time to start thinking about that holiday season. It's creeping Order in now. I feel it. I feel um, that creep. My, my children have now each gotten a Garrow. Uh, the girl stuff. Same, same. And so uh, they are really enjoying uh, talking to each other and uh, then constantly forgetting that he's a binocorn, which is fun. Uh, they keep calling him a rhinocorn, which I enjoy immensely. Cool. Let's explore that. Yeah. I mean, a rhino is already kind of a rhinocorn. Exactly. But um, imagine if you said, uh, this is a unicorn, except it looks like a rhino. Yeah, sure. So this th- this is going to be a thanks for Montaigne. Okay. Thanks, Monty, for the use for a theme song. My life is better with you. Um, uh, it makes you stronger to cure it. That's and true. And if you have if you have fear, any anything, any fear, any weakness, the song makes it go away. Oh, um, yeah. In the like scariest times, the song makes you strong enough to face it. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. cool. That's yeah, amazing. It's amazing. No How idea. do they do that? Is it like a binaural or like a under you know like a subconscious thing? Yes, both of them. That's amazing. Hey, big news uh, on the tour front. The shows in San Jose and Denver that were postponed have been rescheduled. Yep, April nice. 27th, San Jose, California, Adventure Zone. Uh, that's still with Abria, which is very exciting. It's going to be yep. super great. April 28th, San Jose, My Brother, My Brother and Me. And April 29th, Denver, My Brother, My Brother and Me. All existing tickets will be honored for the new dates. If you yep. can't attend the rescheduled dates, keep an eye out for an email from your venue or AXS. And you will have 30 days from when you get that email to request a refund. And if you don't have tickets but want to go, you uh, we... We'll be selling those tickets. Uh, you can get those on sale now. And Travis we- promises he won't get COVID this time. Yeah, also promise. Cross cross my lungs. Um, November shows in uh, Washington D.C. with Brendan Lee Mulligan DMing Deadlands Two. Uh, we got the shows in Detroit and Cincinnati. And mask and proof of full vaccination or negative COVID test within 72 hours of event start is required. And don't forget to pre-order Taz 11th Hour now. Go to theadventurezonecomic.com to pre-order. And those are coming out February 21st. Faster than you think. Yep. That's it. Everybody, stick to your guns. I'll do it. I feel like I didn't contribute much this week. Stick to your guns. No, that's not what we went with. We had something different. What was our new thing? I think it was whoever didn't contribute the most tests. No, we decided we Travis ruled that out fairly oh, okay, wisely. Okay. Then we had a new thing. What was our new? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but it's also from a future episode for the Halloween special. I don't think people have heard yet. Okay, Holy well shit. then I'll just okay, say that. Well, I'm, let me do it anyway. Okay. 
because I have to go in 30 seconds. Don't ever compromise for any reason. <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother. My brother may kiss your dad's girl on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. The Brennan Lee Mulligan DMing Deadlands 2. Uh, we got the shows in Detroit and Cincinnati and mask and proof of full vaccination or negative COVID test within 72 hours of event start is required. And don't forget to pre-order Taz 11th Hour now. Go to theadventurezonecomic.com to pre-order and those are coming out February 21st. Faster than you think. Yep. That's it. Everybody stick to your guns. I'll do it. I feel like I didn't contribute much this week. Stick to your guns. No, that's not what we went with. We had something different. What was our new thing? I think it was whoever didn't contribute the most has No, to... we decided, we, Travis ruled that out fairly, oh, okay, wisely. Okay. Then we had a new thing. What was our new no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but it's also from a future episode for the Halloween special. I don't think people have heard yet. Okay, Holy well shit. then I'll just okay, say well that. Then... I'm, let me do it anyway. Okay. Because I have to go in 30 seconds. Don't ever compromise. <laughs> for any reason. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother. My brother may kiss your dad's grow the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.